from MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. Monday night, there were multiple fires in our county and in our state, like the one right behind me here. Hear from the person that caught photos of the silos up in black smoke. Coming up. And some of the victims' names being released from that dust storm crash on Interstate 90 outside of Hardin, including a local person, will have a, that story also coming up. That it, whole story is terrifying, isn't it? situations yeah. there. I, what's beautiful out there, that was our community hospital of Anaconda. I can look into the uh, Mining City. Gorgeous out this it morning. It really and, is. And a temperature that's comfortable. It's much cooler than it was it, yesterday. Unfortunately, this, this week is going to continue to tick right back up. I think we're mm -hmm. probably going to be into the 90s for much of the area through yeah. the afternoons. Uh, we'll cross our fingers that we can keep the uh, smoke out of our skies. It's, there's going to be a little ebb and flow with that, and I'll show you that smoke forecast coming up in a bit. I can't believe I'm having a smoke forecast. A smoke already. forecast. Uh, temperatures yeah. into the 30s, go. 40s, and 50s across the area. Look for clear skies today. Rain chances remain pretty slim for the next few days. Daytime temperatures back into the mid, even upper 80s for the Bozeman area. We'll be approaching the 90 degree mark pretty quickly here this week. We're going to talk more about that, of course. In just a few minutes. A lot of that smoke coming from Idaho, but we did add a little bit of it mm -hmm. from right here in southwest Montana last night. Just as the high winds were starting to subside in Gallatin County last night, fire broke out along Highline Road. Dan's Jane McDonald uh, has the details. Right behind me, you can see the Bridger Mountain Range with a beautiful blue and pink sky and a field being irrigated. But if you just look down this road right here, you can still see the white haze of a structure fire. I just Looked out, saw a huge plume of smoke. Before leaving the car, we could smell smoke in the air and see the light colored smoke hovering on the road. And just beyond it, lights of first responders. Is it, this is that time that those all start happening. A photo capturing the moment. James Erickson took his spotting scope and saw this, a pair of silos surrounded by black smoke. I popped onto the uh, Gallatin fire radio thing that's online and I heard that engines were responding, so I didn't call 911 or anything. On the scene, teams heading back and forth further into the property. An ambulance out near the front, and it wasn't just one team. Highlight Fire, Central Valley, Manhattan, and Amsterdam all sent first responders there to assist. Earlier Monday night, a small grass fire north of the interstate near Three Forks. Sheriff Dan Springer told MTN that there are no structure threats for that fire, and it was completely contained. And James says that all of this reminds him of years past. Well, it's definitely not the first one out in that area that was that big. There was one last year. It's going to be in the next, like, few weeks. Is it, this is that time that those all start happening. As we've been here, we've seen multiple trucks back up to address the fire. As we learn more, we'll be sure to keep you updated. In Bozeman, Jane McDonald, MTN News. All right, thank you, Jane. 633 now. There's new information on Friday's deadly dust storm that killed six people, injured others in a 21-vehicle pileup on Interstate 90 near Harden. We're still waiting on official confirmation of the names and identities of the people killed, but Montana Highway Patrol tells us all the victims are from Montana. The youngest was just three years old. Tans often has the latest on that crash. Yes, so this is very sad news for all of Montana. We are learning more about the people killed in the crash and the heartbreak felt by their families and the communities around them. What we know, the dust storm hit drivers suddenly at 4.30 Friday afternoon, a few miles outside of Hardin. This was really bad. I want to get off the road. Drivers tell us they were blinded by the storm and saw vehicles colliding around them. This is crazy. Montana Highway Patrol released more details about the accident Monday, saying 21 vehicles were involved in the pileup. They were from nine different states and one Canadian province. In total, 29 people were involved in the pileup, and along with the six people killed, 11 people were injured, three with critical injuries. With drivers describing dust columns up to 200 feet in the air, air ambulances could not get in to help, and everyone injured was taken by ground ambulance to the Bighorn County Memorial Hospital, and the people most seriously injured were then transported to Billings. We know one of the people killed was a staple in the Bozeman community, 
Eric Love, who was the founder and CEO of Crosscut, a 500-acre outdoor sports hub in the Bridge Range, known for its Nordic skiing training area. Crosscut announced Love's passing Monday in an emotional message, saying Eric's wife Jackie was in the car, injured in the crash, and taken to a hospital in Billings. Crosscut CEO Jen Beeston says in the post that Jackie was alert and in conversation with her family and close friends. What the organization says is hold your loved ones close, keep Jackie and their whole family in your hearts, and if you're close, feel free to hike, bike, and reflect in your own way on our magical trails when you're ready. You know Eric would have welcomed you with his broad smile. In Billings, Jackie Coffin, MTN News. 636 now on the national scene. The most infectious and transmittable COVID-19 variant yet is surging. CDC reports 75% of the country experiencing medium or high levels of community spread. More than half of Americans live in counties with a high community level of COVID. Hospitalizations, deaths, and daily case rates are the highest they've been in months. For the first time in weeks, CDC forecasts are predicting a rise in hospitalizations over the next month. As Newsy's James Packard explains, one of the problems health officials face is an underreporting of cases. It keeps going up and down, up and down. You just want it to end. New coronavirus variants are driving what could be one of the most intense surges ever seen in parts of the U.S. Developed a fever, like 102, um, and exhaustion that I have never experienced. In San Francisco, wastewater testing shows cases of COVID-19 could be spiking far faster than public data would suggest, as more Americans use at-home tests and self-isolate, never getting their case documented at a testing site or doctor's office, leading experts and healthcare leaders coast to coast to prepare for a massive surge. We're anticipating that A5 um, is pretty transmissible um, and perhaps even more transmissible than uh, earlier Omicron variants. And here in Los Angeles, experts fear hospitalizations could quickly get worse than anything Southern California has previously seen, projecting a rapid climb in the next two weeks. Now, the city is on the verge of again requiring indoor masking. Already, it's urging its residents to do so, matching pleas for most of the U.S. population who live in areas where leaders are making similar requests. I'm going to be masking up everywhere I go now, regardless of how I feel. Um, it's what I can do as a courtesy to everyone else that I'm around because I didn't feel symptoms for two days. The daunting forecast as studies show reinfection increases the likelihood of getting long COVID with symptoms like brain fog and muscle aches lasting for weeks or months. There is a substantial amount of data to support the fact that those people that are vaccinated will have a reduced chance of long COVID. As researchers and regulators scrambled to get a new booster shot on the market to tackle the Omicron variant of the virus. Is it even better than the booster we have right now is, is gonna be a question. And increase access to antiviral treatments like Paxlovid, now available for pharmacists to provide to patients. I think it's great. I mean, it, it eliminates the patient from having to make an appointment with their doctor. But the numbers form a grim outlook as summer travel and gatherings pick up steam. It feels like right now that we're going to have endless boosters every three months or something like that. Like that's not the long-term goal. We're still in the thick of it right now is the problem that we keep getting these uh, surges.